job for everything that's happening for me right now. And I'm just taking my time building. I got the new family, No Limit Family. It's all to the good, you heard me. Okay, let's rewind selection. Let's cut to the chase. What happened the day you woke up and said, Death Row, I'm done? Well, basically, I had a long discussion with, with God, the man upstairs, and he told me that I'd done all I could do for them. It was me to move forward to, to do other things with my life, to make my career bigger and brighter, you know what I'm saying? Just to move forward. You know, you got to gradually grow in this game, and as I grow, the label grows, and unfortunately, the label didn't grow. I didn't have a chance to because the CEO was locked up, and I want to tell you, sure, not keep your head up right now, but, you know, along them lines, you know, the label couldn't grow with me, so I had to give it a label that was new and with, willing to grow with me, and no limit. The world's number one rap label in the world got the world's number one rapper in the world. Hello. Please believe it. Okay, but I think you shocked everybody on your approach upon your release of leaving Death Row. Did you kind of like anticipate that you would have repercussions on the way you left by going to the press and saying that you felt like maybe your life was threatened a little well, bit? Well, sort of, kind of, in the beginning, I was sort of lost, you know what I'm saying? I was misled. And, you know, I was lost. And, you know, that's how we are a lot of times. We, we make mistakes, and I made a lot of mistakes through them times. And, you know, I was giving my mind back and my wisdom and my knowledge, and I'm able to move forward and do it in a professional manner and close business with them and start. Yeah, there are a lot of people, though, who you kind of maybe left behind and feel like you abandoned death row, that you didn't have that loyalty that they yeah, expected. Yeah, basically, I mean, but, you know, it's still all love. I love everybody over there, you know what I'm saying? They know that individually. I love them all the same way. It's just Snoop Dogg grew and he got bigger, so he had to get into a new situation. But, I mean, maybe in the near future, I'll be able to do something with the artists, with the business over there. You never know. I mean, my, my mind is open right now. I ain't playing hate and I ain't tripping on nothing. I'm trying to make music and be here forever. I'm trying to be a grandfather. No question, no question. What is your relationship with Suge now? I mean, I heard you give him a shout-out. All praises to him. Yeah, for sure. Him. I mean, you know, I respect his hand, his business hand. I respected him when he was on the street, so I definitely got to respect him while he locked up. So, you know, I say that to say this. You know, it ain't nothing but love. You know, everything he taught me, I appreciate it. I appreciate them for being there for me through my trial, supporting me, staying down with me, keeping me strong, inspirational. And that's something that, you know, you can't repay. And, you know, just like the records that I made for him. Mm -hmm. That's something that you can't repay. So we take the good with the bad and the bad with the good, and we just move forward from that. Definitely. And with Jazz being your cousin, are you guys still going to be able to work together even though he is now a CEO of Death Row and you're here at the No Limit Camp? You guys still have that bond and we'll work together? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? He did some things on my new album. The game is to be sold. Not to be told. He did some scratches and he helped me out with uh, with a song I did with John B. D.O.G. is getting lonely. He helped me come up with some words. You know, me and my cousin will always be family. Me and Sugar will always be cool. I mean, it's, that was business. You know, it wasn't nothing personal. It was business. We made money off each other, we made careers off each other, we had a good times, and, you know, we just gradually grow. As time moves forward, we have to move forward and get on with our lives, and that's all it's about. Don't go nowhere, we're going to keep on to get in his head, see how he really got yeah. it. He's just saying, it's yeah. all about Snoop, let me do my own thing, my own label situation, my own distribution, my own records. Why did you feel like you need to go to another family? Uh, because I'm too big of an artist to be trying to, you know, juggle the two, to juggle business and creativity at the same time. Master P gives me the creative room to do my creative side and be the artist that I know that I am and they promote it and work it to the fullest. And the business side will come later, you know what I'm saying, as far as me establishing a label and doing this and that. I just wanted to be the best artist that I could be and establish myself fully as an artist, knowing that, you know, my skills and my status as an artist had to be completely in order before I stepped into the realm of trying to get a label and an artist. Because it's hard and a lot of artists don't understand that it takes a lot of work. You just don't put out one record mm -hmm. and get a big house or go to the store and buy 40 ounces and get your hair braided and put on some khakis and thank you Snoop Dogg. It takes a whole lot of work and dedication. I mean, I don't have the patience to deal with it, you know what I'm saying, right, basically. Right, so right. I just wanted to get with a situation that can help my situation better. And Master P and them is like a locker is fucking, you know, I'm a quarterback and I needed some good protection while I was in the pocket. I need people to block for me and catch the passes and run the routes and do all the right things and they, they already was doing that. Right. So I slide right into their program. They helped me, I helped them. And we're going to take this tank overseas. Now, is it the fact that maybe the No Limit Camp is riding a big wave not right now that you drifted towards them as opposed to E-40 and the Click or the Bad Boy Clamp or So So Jeff or whoever? It was more hospitable, it was more vibe. Snoop Dogg only gonna react on what he feel. And I'm a, I'm a feel type of person. I got a lot of friends in the music industry from different places in the world. Master P and them, it didn't feel like no regular friendship. It felt like family. 
when I used to kick it one of when I was doing songs with Mexico and Silk before the album came out and before the success had all the way kicked in, you know, universally as far as the public accepted it. Because you know how the public is, they don't accept it until there's a definite stamp on it. But to say that, to say this, when I was doing all of that, our relationship was going from friends to family because they knew I was trying to, you know, move forward, but they didn't press the issue and they just opened the doors and had opportunity that could save the day. And I mean, all the other labels, y'all try to do y'all thing, but you know, y'all didn't step to the table the right way, so hey. it's y'all lost, you know what I'm saying? I was getting at all y'all beforehand. I went to the paper, I said I wanted help. And, well, we'll now I'm with No Limit and I'm back on top. So, and please believe me when I tell you this. Y'all probably. <laughs> You got, them in, you got them in the studio too? Nah, this one right here be in the studio. I think like basketball and video games. And I like football. You like football too? Can you play real good? You should have brought your football to your fans. Now how important is this picture to you? It's everything to me. You know, this is what I come home for. This is what I wake up to. And this is all I'm here for. Was there ever a time where you took it for granted where maybe your music was a little bit more important than your family and you kind of had to put things in perspective? Mm-hmm, and that's easy. It's easy to happen and it's understandable. But I mean, you know, you're blessed with opportunities and you got to make the best of those opportunities. Definitely. So now, are you more consciously aware of what you put on your album or you still feel like you have to be sure? Mm -mm. I'm always going to keep it real. My kids, they, they know who I am and how I am. You know what I'm saying? That's why they love me because I'm real with them. I'm not... You know, I'm not plastic with them. They don't, they don't, you know, they don't look at me like that. They look at me as a father figure, respect. And I tried to ask before, what, in what ways have you grown from the last album to this album? Mm, just more of a, uh, more confident about myself. The last album, I wasn't confident because there was so much tragedy going on. It was hard to try to get, get a, a cool attitude and persona about myself with so much drama and death. And, negativity going on. Now it's just like it's all love, so I got a chance to put my life in perspective and just get my confidence together. And being able to rap confidence, when you hear me on the record, that's the first thing you notice, he back, because he sounds strong and it sounds like Snoop Dogg. It don't sound like a fan or sound cocky and strong. Right, right. Do you ever feel like there's pressure for you to repeat what you did when your first album came out? When you and Dre came out banging, had the charts just showed up. I mean, I know you've done it each, almost each and every time that you've had an album. This is like album number four for you. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like the same pressure still remains? It's always going to be pressure, you know what I'm saying? But the pressure busts pipe, you know what I'm saying? And I don't really trip off of that. I just like to go into the project thinking and knowing that I'm going to put the best that I got to offer into the project. And when the project is done, you know, you as the public have to judge it and say, well, you know, it was a hell of a project, but it really wasn't what I was looking for. You know, it's on you, you know, you're the final decision maker on that. Does what the public think really affect you? I mean, if you feel like you put your heart and soul into this album, does it matter if it doesn't sell? If people are like, maybe not checking for Snoop the way they have been. And not to say that that's not going to happen, but it is a reality. I mean, if it is, I didn't deal with it before, so, you know, it ain't not new. And it's just gonna drive me to get back in the laboratory and come up with something that much more devastating. I'm following him, y'all. <laughs> no, please. Please get the world ready for this man sitting next to you. <laughs> This is the Park Ranger right here, my Uncle June, but live in the place. <laughs> Don't try and get all shot now, because he's truly been kicking game over here. Well, I'm not getting live in the place, because I am fresh and I am live. <laughs> always be there, you know. Tell him how Italian you are. Banana Italian. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, <what? laughs> That's the mole right there. That's the mole. That's right. I'm supposed to be the mole. I'm the oldest of, the oldest of all the dogs. There wasn't no dogs until I came along. Okay, what does it mean to be a dog? A nasty dog. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it means. But man, I am a nasty dog. <laughs> the first time you ever saw his video or you ever heard his music on the radio, how did you feel? I never feel. I feel good. You know, it brought back things that I, that I used to do. Because, mm -hmm. see, I was a music man anyway. And when they were little, I'm the one that used to play like Jackie Wilson, James Brown. All that. I used to babysit them. And then, hey, I knew they was going to carry on if I leave today. 
the man would carry on as a park ranger uh -huh. <laughs> in the house. I ain't a stranger to danger because I'm the nephew of the park ranger. Okay, what was the video he was in? Uh, Snoop's upside your head. Yeah, yeah. What's that dance step you was doing? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. 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 Hey, they all like that. But see, you know what? I'm beginning to start destroying people because my dance is all over New York, it's all, all overseas and everywhere. And hey, I should be getting paid. Hey, give me some. I, I, give me some. That's right. I feel you on that. That's right. Don't be stealing. Because everybody, everybody likes that. And then I got the hammer. You do the hammer? the hammer, yeah. How you do the hammer? Show me the hammer one time. You got to stand up and do a stamp. Show me that. Get it like this here. And get it and get it and get it. And then come back. And hey. That's right. That's all the you hammer. Don't be stealing it, baby. The originator. That's right, right cause here. if I see it on y'all's show, y'all gotta come up with some money. <laughs> That's right. <laughs>